All right, welcome back. This is episode two of How We Disney. I'm Jeff, this is Sarah, and today we're gonna talk all things Disney World tours. So we've done quite a few tours from Keys to the Kingdom to something fun at Typhoon Lagoon that we'll talk about later, Behind the Seeds, and a bunch of other ones. So we're gonna just kind of talk about some of our favorites, why we like them, who tours are for, maybe some of the best times to do tours, and just kind of discuss why we think they're such a fun part of Disney World. Yeah, so I would say like a for us, how we Disney tours are definitely a big part of that. So we wanted to share kind of how we pick tours and all of that information. Uh, I think exactly what you said. So like first, we'll start out with kind of what are tours, yep. and uh, again, Disney World is kind of unique when it comes to the different Disney parks in that they have so many different tours. We've done probably ten or twelve of them, um, but there's everything from ones that are available year round. That uh, they have special festival ones, they have holiday ones, they have inexpensive ones that are maybe $20, $30 to very expensive ones like VIP tours. So we're going to cover all of the types of tours except VIP tours. So we're going <laughs> to save VIP tours just because they're kind of the extreme um, when it comes to cost and they're a bit unique. So we might do a whole separate How We Disney sometime about VIP tours. Yeah, so I guess what we'll do first is kind of jump into what is a tour. So Sarah kind of mentioned, but there are tours that are informational. There are tours that kind of show you behind the scenes. There's tours that you get to kind of explore unique areas or do unique things that we'll definitely t talk about a little bit later on. Um, there's tours that get you to the front of lines. There's food tours. There's tours at festivals. So there's ones where you kind of get to explore some of the things unique to that festival. And really there's a tour for just about everything that you could want to do in Disney. I think some of our favorites um, come from all those different categories, honestly. So with that, um, anything you want to add? No, I think that we'll start out with kind of like why we recommend them. And then we will talk a little bit about maybe the best one for first timers. And then we'll go into like our top three and then maybe a few bonus <laughs> bonus ones. But um, we'll give a, co a couple because I think our favorite are maybe a little different for what's best for somebody if it's like your mm -hmm. first Disney tour. So first, like why do you recommend tours? Yeah, so for me, it's just a way to do something different in Disney. If you go a lot or if you have a longer trip where maybe you don't want to be going to the park every day, doing rides, that kind of stuff a tour is a great way to get historical information maybe about Walt and how you know Magic Kingdom came about or to see behind the scenes or you know in the case of some of them in Magic Kingdom you get to go into like the Utilidor which is the underground area or you get to see how animals are raised so it's a really fun way to just kind of get to explore a different aspect of Disney that you never would get to otherwise and these tours happen all the time they happen multiple times a day for a lot of them and you've probably run across a lot of these tours while they're going on and just didn't really realize what it was so for me it's just something special and something extra that disney offers that really kind of just makes a trip more unique than if i were to just keep doing the same thing going down you know doing rides or that kind of thing so for me it's just a new experience is why i really like the tours yeah, I think you hit on a lot of like the points that I, are the same for me. So I would say that my two main reasons I think you should do a Disney tour is uh, either for information. So you have to be like one of those Disney fans that just wants to go and we'll talk about kind of our favorite informational tours, but um, go and learn all the facts and hear all the cool stuff. Um, I also think the access, so exactly what you said, like getting access to things that you can't have access to otherwise, like spaces and lounges and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that they're great for people that go to the parks often, yep. or at least go, um, have taken Disney trips before. I would say when I would not recommend a Disney tour is if it's your first Disney trip. So if it's your first Disney trip, focus on Disney World, <laughs> enjoying the rides, exploring the resorts. Um, but if you've had a couple Disney trips and you're looking for something new or you want to learn more, then I think these are a great option uh, for any age group. Uh, some of them are restricted where kids are not allowed, so just check that ahead of time, but yep. yeah. Yeah, I also say maybe if it's a shorter trip. So if you're just going down mm -hmm. for, you know, one night, maybe two nights, something like that. You know, maybe a tour is not the best use of time, depending on which one you do, because mm -hmm. it is time that you have to buy a ticket for and you're in the park, but you're not able to go on rides. You're not able to just kind of explore at your own pace. It's kind of more of a scheduled time for you. So, you know, if it's a shorter trip, maybe that's not something you want to do. But overall, yeah, I agree with what you had to say. 
Mm-hmm. And one last thing related to that before we jump into like the best one for a first tour. But I think the cost is, so Disney trips can be expensive, um, but I will say there is the whole range. So we'll try to mention the prices of some of these tours that we're recommending. Uh, but I will say that some of them are as cheap as like 20, 30 bucks. So yeah. that can be a quick service at <laughs> Disney World. So it's one of those things I think if you just plan and decide what's gonna fit best with your trip, that's a, that's a good option, so. Yeah, and along those lines, I think some of the tours are as short as, you know, an hour to an hour and 15, 20 minutes up to, you know, as long as you want it to go. If you're talking a VIP tour, which, you know, is again, the extreme, but those can go up to 14 hours if you want to book back-to-back ones. So really, a tour length, in addition to what's in the tour, can kind of be catered to you know how much time you have and what you want to do with you know with that tour. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, ready for the one we recommend for first timers or first tours? I so I shouldn't say first time trippers, first time tour tour goers. Yeah, go for it. All right, so I think that the tour that's best for first time people is going to be the Marceline to Magic Kingdom tour. Yep. So uh, this is going to be a three hour tour in Magic Kingdom. It's a pretty reasonably priced tour, so currently it is $49. Um, so I think it's not a huge time commitment, it's not a huge cost, but for me, you get a great bang for your buck. So tons of info, yep. we'll talk about kind of a little bit about what they do on the tour, but for me, I think that's the perfect one if you want to learn some info for a first time. Yeah, and you also get an annual pass discount, I believe. Yeah. So, so don't forget that if you are an annual pass holder. But yeah, that's an awesome tour. That kind of mixes the... Um, I guess behind the scenes and some of the history of Walt and how he came about making or having this idea for Magic Kingdom and Disneyland and all of those ideas. And so, yeah, I think that's an awesome first tour. I think it kind of mixes a little bit of everything that you would want. It's short enough that you won't get bored, but at the same time, it's plenty long that you get a lot of information. You get a lot of behind the scenes stuff, which is what I really enjoy. So I think that's a that's a really fun one to start with. Yeah, and so if, I mean, if you don't, I don't know how much Disney history you maybe know, but Marceline is gonna be where kind of Walt pulls a lot of his inspiration for the parks. And so you get a ton of Walt focused uh, information. There are certain uh, bonus things. So each guide can kind of add their own information. So I will say there's some of these tours we've done more than once. And mm-hmm. so the tour guide will cater some of the information to theirs. You'll learn tons, <laughs> more than you could ever remember um, on many of these tours. Uh, but some of the Magic Kingdom tours, Mar- um, Marceline being one of them, uh, we have, when we did it, we got access to rides as well. And it's not just mm-hmm. like doing a ride because you want to go ride um, Haunted Mansion. So on this one, I believe we went on Haunted Mansion and Carousel of Progress. Yep, um, I think so. And when we were on both of those, so uh, especially Carousel of Progress has a huge tie to Walt with being at the World's Fair. It wasn't like you just did the ride, you had headsets. So when you do these headsets, yep. the guide will walk you through the park and then you have a headset on um, and you'll listen to the guide through there. So if there is background noise, you won't kind of get it drowned out but they will share facts with you during the mm-hmm. ride and that type of stuff. Though so that was really, really neat. Yeah, I, I really enjoy that. So they'll kind of narrate the ride as mm-hmm. you're going through it or the Carousel Progress Show or whatever you want to call it. Um, and they'll share these facts with you. And they do this on a lot of tours. It's not just this one. Mm-hmm. So in just about every tour we've been on, I think, you do get a headset. Mm-hmm. The guide is there. They are navigating you through the park or through the attraction or through whatever it is you're doing. And they're sharing this information with you. So you do have a headset, which is nice. You know, it kind of helps. And let's talk for you know Haunted Mansion. You're not in the same ride vehicle, so you couldn't hear what they're saying. So it's a nice way to kind of, uh, I guess, be able to keep up with the guide and to have them tell you information as it's happening. Yeah. And if it's a big group and they maybe can't tell you information because the length, then they'll try to tell you facts ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of hear them there. So yeah, so I think that is a great reason that, so Marceline, you get that ride experience, you get the great information. The tour guides we've all had are fabulous. Um, the other reason I think this is a great one for first timers is you do get that backstage access. Yep. So it's maybe not to the extreme as another Magic Kingdom one, we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but this one, uh, you did get a really cool backstage access, which isn't guaranteed, and if you don't want a spoiler, skip 10 seconds. <laughs> um, but for us, when we did it, we got to see how the ballroom scene in the Haunted Mansion works. Yeah. And that was just like, my jaw was on the floor. Like yeah, it was that so was cool. cool. Yeah, so. For that one, they take you in and they take you behind the scenes and you go actually underneath where the track is and you're in where, I guess, the maintenance crew or the Imagineers would be working. And so you see how all of the ghosts are created using Pepper's Ghost, which is the technique they kind of talk about in it. You get to see how 
um, I guess the mechanics of the ride work. And then after you get this behind the scenes view, they then send you on the ride and you get to kind of view it, knowing something different about the ride, which is a really cool, cool thing that I really enjoyed about that one. Yeah. Yeah. So that is my definitely recommend for first timers. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go into our top three and then we'll kind of do honorable mentions for that? Sure, yeah. So we should probably start with number three. Sure. <laughs> All right, go for it. All right, so our probably of our top three, our third favorite is going to be the snorkeling at Epcot. So they'll call it the Aqua Tour. There's two versions. There's one for snorkeling, which if you're not scuba certified, you do that. And we're not. And we're not. So we did, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the version we did. And there is one if you're scuba certified. But what you do is exactly that. So you're gonna get some information you're going to be with the guide um but the main like thing is you get 30 minutes in the aquarium in the sea pavilion which um if you haven't seen the aquarium in the sea <laughs> pavilion next time you're in epcot you need to do it because it's massive and awesome but there's sharks there's sea turtles there's stingrays yeah. um and you're in the aquarium i was a little hesitant when we first got up there to do it but it was so cool like one yeah. of the coolest experiences i've had yeah and i'm pretty sure that's the only reason anyone does this tour because it is broken down i think probably maybe an hour or so of behind the scenes you get to see um you know i guess the backstage area of the seas pavilion which is fun and it's really cool but i do think the only reason people actually do it is because they want to go swimming in the uh in the aquarium so the way it works is if you're snorkeling they give you a whole mask and uh, like an air kit type of thing it actually seemed pretty similar to a scuba kit mm -hmm. except that you also have this vest on which prevents you from going below the surface so you essentially just float around and it's it sounds kind of weird that you're just floating around this aquarium but it is awesome i have mm -hmm. to say it's Pretty unbelievable seeing all these fish and sea life as you're just kind of floating along the surface. And a lot of them come up to you pretty close. Mm -hmm. I imagine they're just used to people being in the tank. But I think this one, even though it's only 30 minutes in the tank, the reason I like it so much is where else can you really do that? Yeah. I mean, it's an awesome experience mm -hmm. and it's something that you kind of never will forget because it's really, really fun. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So I... I am not a confident person for going in the ocean, but the Disney people were like, we feed the sharks well. Like, they're okay. So they don't guarantee anything, but like, I felt very comfortable. Yeah. Uh, I think technically on Disney's website, they'll say the tour is an uh, hour, and, or excuse me, two and a half hours with 30 minutes in the tank. So yeah, you have some behind the scenes stuff. You have to have time to get changed into the suits right. um, and changed out of the suits. It costs currently $145. I think you can use some discounts, but you'd have to check uh, with that Disney on that. But for us, like the experience of it is still is worth the cost. Um, it's if you are a water person or you mm -hmm. like that kind of aqua life, <laughs> I would say um, it's just such a cool experience. And you're in the tank and people are like waving at you and you're like, hey. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would say even if you're not an aqua person, do it. If you're an animal person. Yeah. I mean, you get to see animals in a unique way that you never would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, it is kind of funny. They do make a whole scene of you, uh, <laughs> I guess, going to the tank. So you get changed behind the scenes in a locker room, and then you all have on your wetsuits and all of your gear. And then they actually parade you through the seas pavilion in front of all the guests in a line wearing your wetsuits as they take you, you know, from one backstage entrance through the public area and into another backstage entrance where you enter the tank. So, you know, it's just a fun experience, something that I'll remember for a long time and something that. I really enjoyed as a Disney tour that you really can't do many other places. Yeah. And I don't think they're purposely like showing you off to guests. I think it's like how you access the tank, but it is like just a surreal experience <laughs> that you're like one of the cast members walking yeah. to swim with the animals. Um, and they do talk about the other animals, like the mantises and the other stuff um, before you get into the tank. Mm -hmm. But, um, and if you think half an hour in the tank sounds like a long amount of time, it goes through in like a blink of an eye. Like it was so oh, fun the entire you're done time. so fast. Um, so it's, it's good. It's still plenty of time to explore, but it's just such a neat experience. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I think mm -hmm. that is an easy number three. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do number two? So for me, it's Keys to the Kingdom, mm -hmm. which is similar to Marceline, mm -hmm. except it's a little less history of Walt and a little more, I think, history of Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so that's a historical tour where you're getting history facts, you're getting information. It's again behind the scenes as well. And I think that the highlight of that tour has to be the Utilidor, yeah. which is the underground I guess, walkway or almost city that's beneath Magic Kingdom. 
And that's pretty cool because you get to spend quite a while down there. The guest or the uh, cast member who's leading your tour is filled with facts and they show you some, I guess, some pictures and stories of Walt and all of that down there and of Magic Kingdom being built. You get to see where the cast members work and kind of tour around down there. So it's it's a pretty cool experience to get to see that. And you also do a couple backstage rides as well. So mm -hmm. you want to talk about those? Sure. So yeah, so this tour just is kind of a gauge compared to the Marceline tour. This one is five hours. So it definitely is mm -hmm. longer. So it's a bigger time commitment. And this one is $100. Uh, the extra that you do get with this tour, though, is we had lunch at Pecos Bill. So there are yep. some definite benefits there. Um, but the rides that you do, uh, or at least the rides that we did. So anytime you do a tour, Disney won't guarantee this. Um, but I think it's pretty mm -hmm. consistent. We've done this tour twice, and both times we've done, we've done it, it, we've yeah. done these two rides. So yep. um, we rode Jungle Cruise. And yep. the really cool thing about Jungle Cruise, so we were doing this with two of our friends. And uh, it's just us and a couple of their guests, and they take you on your own boat. So yeah. you're on the That's boat, nice. and instead mm -hmm. of getting the normal skipper who's telling the jokes, which is still really fun, you have the cast member who is your tour guide, and she's there sharing all of the different mm -hmm. facts and information about, uh, oh, this thing means this, and when the Imagineers yep. were doing this, they did this. And so it's just an overwhelming but awesome amount of information. Um, and you get to like hear stuff that you wouldn't normally hear because yep. they're not having the cast member talk kind of nonstop. They'll pause and be like, can you hear this? So yeah, that was really cool. And then I believe the other ride we did was Haunted Mansion. Um, so yep. that is similar to Marceline. I don't know if they rotate or how it works, but um, similar, they will give you information and let you go on the ride, but we didn't go under Haunted Mansion. Right. So we would um, go in and ride it and we rode Jungle Cruise, but no like special yeah. behind the scene on the ride. I think we did It's a Small World the first time as well. Okay, yes, I think right? you're right. The think, first, I, so the we've first done this one we, twice. Yeah, the first yeah. time we also did It's a Small World and that kind of shows that, yeah, it's not a guarantee. You mm -hmm. kind of, I guess, I don't know what the cast members look for or, mm -hmm. you know, determine what rides you'll go on, but... We also did that, and they kind of talked us through that ride as well. So it's a fun time. I have to say it's it's a unique experience. It's a little bit longer, but you yeah. get to see more things. So I, I really like that one. Yeah, I think for me, um, some of the extra things that put Case of the Kingdom well above uh, Marceline are going to be... I enjoy having the longer amount of time. Um, for this one, I like seeing the parade floats. So we were with our oh, friends, yeah. as I mentioned. I so one, one of the behind the scenes areas is you go and see the Festival of Fantasy floats and where they store all of them. Yeah. And so I think being able to see all of that is just really cool and be that close to the floats without people on them and they tell you how they work. So that's really fun. Yeah. Um, and I do think like for $100 to get five hours of time with a cast member, you can always ask the cast members and questions. And the lunch. Yeah, lunch at Pecos Bill was awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. I should say, we I don't think we brought this up yet, but on most of the tours you do, you get pins. So they will hand yeah. you pins. So here we had like a little, I think it was a key, um, for the pins mm -hmm. um, for this per, uh, for this tour. So that was really nice. Um, one thing I'll also say just quickly with this tour, we did it in particular, but a lot of the tours we try to book the earliest time slot yes. we can. And if you do any Disney tours, that is strongly recommended. Try to pick it during to start not during a park mm -hmm. open time. Um, because then you can get into the park before normal guests. Kind of like yeah. if you have an extra early uh, breakfast reservation, you can do that. Um, so it was really cool to be in the park ahead of time. And then when the di park did open, we had to go into back st uh, further back areas that weren't open yet. Our tour guide just basically <laughs> uh, maneuvered her way through the crowds and was like, no, no, my group this way. So it's, you feel very special on the tour and you get tons of information. So yeah. but that early morning park access is another kind of perk of doing tours. Yeah, and it's nice because if you want to take a picture in front of the castle or if you're a photographer or if you just want to go up and grab a selfie or just even explore the park a little bit before the park actually opens. So... <laughs> Even though it's not open, you do have access to all of Main Street up to the castle. So you kind of can go check in right away and then go explore. Or you can just run right up to the castle, you know, kind of see that with nobody in it. And then head back to uh, more towards the entrance where you'll actually check in for your tour group. But it's really fun if you can be sure to plan your tour for a day where the park doesn't open early. So, you know, if you have an 8 a.m. tour, try and find a day where the park opens at 9 to schedule that. Don't schedule it for a day where early hours opens at 7 because that kind of defeats the whole extra benefit unless, you know, that's the only day that works for you. But it is a fun tour. It is a really cool experience to get to see these things, especially the Utilidor. And I really enjoyed that Festival of Fantasy Parade stuff too. Mm -hmm. That was really cool because you go in behind and you never really... Even though you see them up close in the parade, I don't think you realize how big they are mm -hmm. until you're literally like 
maybe two or three feet from them and they're just sitting in a giant warehouse. So that was a cool experience as yeah. well. And I will say the Utilidor. Like, so we kind of brushed over that, but the Utilidor, again, is going to be where the cast members kind of connect. Mm -hmm. And so when we were down in the Utilidor for our tour, and it's it's kind of luck of the draw, but we were there on a day when they were giving the cast members, like, free snacks. Yep. Um, and so in the line for snacks, we had, like, two Princess Tianas, a Cinderella, a Snow White. So they <laughs> were all there. All the princesses were, like, all done up. But then maybe they had, like, sneakers or something on. And they were just all there waiting to get their snacks. And, I mean... You, of course, can't take pictures or anything yeah. when you're backstage, um, but it was just so fun to see them. And so I'm sure they like get the people on the tours who are always like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so, um, but that is just really fun, uh, a fun aspect as well. So the Utilidor, to the best of my knowledge, uh, this tour out of any other, maybe like except for the super uber expensive tours, yeah. is the only one that's going to uh, give you access to that. So for that, that factor as well, it goes up my number two. Yeah. Yeah. All right, one, number one. Number one, what's our favorite tour in Disney World? Our favorite tour in Disney World is definitely the Wild Africa Trek. So easily. not it's even easily the best. <laughs> not tour. even close. I think we've done it two or three times now. Yes. And I'll do it tomorrow if the park's open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, I actually think my family wants like we did it with his family, now my family wants to do it. So we're we're definitely it's one yeah. we're happy to do multiple times. Um and I guess okay, so first, uh what it is and what's included. So it is in Animal Kingdom, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to walk through the safari portion of Animal Kingdom. And it's not just like a normal walk through the hills. So you are like a little bit backstage learning yeah. about the animals. Um, but the main like shiny thing <laughs> is that you do almost like a ropes course or the bridges um, in the safari. So you walk over the crocodiles. Hey guys, so we are on the Africa Trek. So we are walking across these bridges, which you'll see over there. Um, and so it's really, really cool. They were walking over the habitats. You are on a little like harness and you're in front of the hippos. So the hippos are like right there in front of you and, and they they're feed feeding them. them. Yeah, and they feed them right yes. there when you're overlooking them, not from the ride track, mm -hmm. but you are actually you know, on the opposite side of the water looking down on them from a cliff or a little ledge where they, you know, I guess the vets would mm -hmm. be there to kind of look in on their on their well-being, I guess. So it's really, it is cool. You get to see the entire um, safari from a different point of view mm -hmm. while getting some one-on-one -on -one attention from, you know, a, a safari guide. And I will say in this one, what did we have? Three, four different guides with us, I think. Yeah. You have one or two actual guides. You have another person who's there taking professional photographs. So that's actually included in this tour as well, is at the end, they'll give you a little ID number and you log in and there's probably 50, 60 photos from your group, which is a pretty small group uh, on their tour. And you have access to all of those, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. You mentioned the uh, ropes course a little bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you're up pretty high. You're locked in at this one point, but you do get to walk over top of the alligators or crocodiles. I don't actually know which one they are, but you get to do that. So next time you're actually riding the ride, if you actually, if you look up when you get to the alligator crocodile part, you actually see the ropes course that people walk on. And then that's actually not my favorite part. My favorite part is you have lunch or breakfast or I guess dinner. I've never done a night one, but you have a meal out on the savannah. So there's a small hut that fits probably, what do you think, a dozen, 15 mm -hmm. people. And you have your own safari truck. You go on half the safari. They then drive you up to this savannah view place to have lunch. They cater your lunch with some pretty awesome food. And you get to just look out over the animals. Last time we were there, I think, what, giraffes were They're so five close. feet from us. Yes. They just wandered up to it. And you're just there kind of on your own little island exploring the savannah. And the animals don't really seem to care that you're there. And it's a pretty awesome experience. Hey, everyone. So I just want to give you guys a quick view from the place where we'll be having lunch. So there's tables over here. And then the area outlooks over the savannah. So you can see um, some of the giraffes and the other vehicles driving around. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So just some like background information. I think technically the timing of it is three hours mm -hmm. and it's $139 to $249. And that, of course, could change by Disney. Yeah. Um, so it can be more expensive. I think the range is mainly like time of day and season. Mm -hmm. I will say we prefer, we've done it uh, 
however many times we've done it, we've always done it in the morning first, first thing. Because again, we want to try to get in the park, grab a couple pictures, enjoy the park while it's yep. empty. Um, and I think the benefit of going in the morning is kind of two things, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the animals are getting breakfast, so they're a little more hungry when you walk around. <laughs> yeah. um, and then also, it's not hot. So I would not recommend doing this tour at like 1 o'clock in a summer month. Like, it would no. probably be miserable. Um, anytime in the winter, you're mm -hmm. probably okay, but it, you are outside for most of it. It yeah, is in the heat. It can be hot. It's phys I mean, you're. it's not physical work, but you're not just walking down Main Street. I mean, you're kind of walking through some brush. You have to go up, you know, small hills, down small hills, things like that, because you are in the safari area. <laughs> so I agree. I would not probably do it, you know, at 2 p.m. in August. Mm -hmm. I'd, if I was going to do it in August, it'd probably be the earliest one they had. Um, mm -hmm. But I think those later ones are also the ones where they offer discounts and lower prices. I think this one, I think actually the pricing has to do with the weather mm -hmm. as much as the time of year and everything else, because I think they know people don't really want to do a trek at 2 p.m. in the summer. Yeah, no, I, yeah, so that is definitely something to keep in mind. I also just want to talk a little bit about the food. So the food and having lunch out there is definitely one of the best things or mm -hmm. breakfast or lunch, whatever you do. Um, the menu for this, I believe, is on the website. So if you're curious, the food's a little bit more adventurous. It's um, very adventurous. It's, yeah, it's very, over the tours. It's very good, but it's, it's, adve <laughs> it's adventurous food. Uh, but if you do have dietary restrictions, you can always contact them. Mm -hmm. on the, if you do have a very picky eater, I mean, they don't have to accommodate you, but it's Disney, so they'll do their best. Mm -hmm. um, we were there one time and had a vegetarian version of it, and so, or somebody yeah. in our party did. So mm -hmm. uh, they will like work with you, but that's one where I'd say that we love having it, the unique food, but just be aware yeah. that if you are doing it and you're not looking at the menu ahead of time, you might want to if you have a picky eater uh, in your group. Yeah, yeah, definitely... just check it out because it is weird food. I mean, that's really what it is. It's it's African food, and it's, I would imagine it's real African food, mm -hmm. and it's just not what you would eat any other day of the week. So if you know you are picky, just be aware of that. Yeah. But it's outstanding food. Yeah. It's outstanding. It's yes. very good. Yeah, it's not your normal breakfast wouldn't be mickey <laughs> waffles with eggs and sausage as i guess yeah. so it's not a. it's very good and i love i love that they keep to that like yeah. the theme of everything um so yeah so I, and i will say also when you're doing the safari part of it mm -hmm. so like the trek across the bridges is really unique when you're doing the safari part of it they it's not like your normal ride safari like you would do on the ride right. through the park so when you're taking your safari and they give you binoculars and you can like look at the animals and so and they stop and they stop yeah they, if there's all an animal, over yeah you want to like stop you want. and take some pictures and so they it's not just a here's a quick ride through like you would do in the parks so they're telling yeah. you different info um they're talking about the animals you can ask so all these tours you can ask the cast members mm -hmm. questions so they know so much information if they don't <laughs> know it they'll uh, message someone who will get the information yeah. so i think having them is just so valuable so if you like animals if you're adventurous um we've had people ask in the past if you can skip the ropes course part if you're uh, afraid of heights i would just check with disney and confirm i imagine they have a way to accommodate that. anybody can do the ropes yes. course. so i mean it's disney it's not but you're, you're not gonna fall heights. if you're afraid of heights but yeah. you're not gonna fall you're you know it's safe all of that so i would do it but yeah if you're afraid of heights definitely check into mm -hmm. that um yeah. two other small things about it so the first tour we talked about or the last one you get a pin mm -hmm. this one i don't believe you get a pin no, but yeah. But we get a water bottle. Mm -hmm. This is it's a metal water bottle. It's reusable. It kind of goes with their sustainability idea, and you get to keep that after the trek. And the other quick thing I was going to mention is if you want to bring a small camera or anything on it, your cell phone, you do have to have like a leash or an attachment to you, and that will attach it to your harness so that if you drop it, it doesn't get into the animal areas. But if you don't want to, that's also fine. Like I mentioned, there is a professional photographer that comes around and they have lockers right there for you. So mm -hmm. you can store all of your stuff as much as you want right there at the Trek entrance where nobody else has access to it except for the cast members and you. Hey guys, so they just put our gear on. So we have the vest for the Trek. Um, there's a water bottle and then a harness for the Trek. And then they actually attach our phone uh, so that it can't drop in. So we're getting ready to start. And it's a nice setup, honestly. They, yeah. They've thought of everything, and it's a really fun time. Yeah, and the lockers are free, so it's not... Oh, it's yeah, not yeah. It's, in, it's included with it's your truck. Yeah, it's included with the truck. Um, but yeah, so that's one. If you haven't done it, highly recommend it. Yep. Um, if you're, It's fun if you have like a group of people, because uh, then you'll take up the majority of the tour. So if you are looking for a combo of adventure and information, that mm -hmm. to us is why this is such a perfect tour. So 
what do you think? The first time I know we did it, we were the earliest tour in the day, and we were the only two on it. Yes. And when another time we'd done it, I think we had six or seven. So I don't know how big the tour gets, but we've never had a large group. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Seven is not large once you see, you know, the size of the vehicle and where you eat. It could easily accommodate double that. But I don't know what they cap it at. Yeah. No. I'm I just not know sure we've never had a large group. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we tend to do it in more. Uh, winter season yep. so maybe that helps that it's not like spring break or one of those but yeah it's it's a very good tour for interacting yeah, with the cast members for sure and there are so many cast members mm -hmm. but yeah so those are our top three but we still want to share our honorable mentions yeah some and, other tours that are fun and probably our most unique tour we've ever done so the most unique tour while all the disney experiences are really good i'd say mm -hmm. the most unique one that maybe a lot of people aren't familiar with is typhoon lagoon do you agree Ah, oh, absolutely it is. Yeah. It's, yeah <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. So Typhoon Lagoon is not really a tour, but it's listed as a tour. Like, that's mm -hmm. how you book it. And you actually get to go surfing in the wave pool. They turn up the waves. I don't know how high they are, but they are definitely sufficiently large for you to surf. Mm -hmm. And this tour takes place either before the park opens or I believe sometimes after the park closes. So it's a very early morning or a later night. You go in there with a small group and they teach you how to surf. And it's, I don't know how long, but you are more than tired by the time you're done. Um, so it's long enough. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, you get out of there and the only knock on this, why it probably didn't make one of our top ones is surfing is very hard. <laughs> And when you get to the end of this wave pool, you don't swim back out. You literally get out of the wave pool, pick up your surfboard, which is surprisingly heavy, and walk it all the way back up to the top around the edge. So that was my only knock on this. And I would actually say that you have to be physically fit to do yeah. this one. This one is the only tour I've ever done in Disney where if you are not in physically good or decent shape, mm -hmm. you won't be able to carry that surfboard. Yeah. And I thought it was kind of weird that it wasn't like told to us beforehand. Mm -hmm. We were just fortunate enough that we were fine doing it. But I could see cases where people sign up for this. Mm -hmm. You know, younger kids, smaller people, maybe some older people, and they just, they can't carry the surfboard. Yeah. And I don't really know what you would do because there's not cast members there to help. No. I remember when we did it, there was a young girl mm -hmm. and her dad was there, luckily, and he wasn't doing the tour. So he literally just walked her surfboard <laughs> back for her. But besides that point, I mean, it is awesome. Yeah. You're there at the pitch black morning and they walk you in, they teach you how to surf on the sand, like the standing and the positioning and the paddling and all of that. And then you jump into the wave pool with the surf guides and fall down a bunch. And if you're lucky, you know, you get up once or twice mm -hmm. and then, you know, an hour and a half later, you're exhausted and you've gotten to surf in Disney World. Yeah. So I will say that if you're looking, so two things, I guess. So one is it, the cost of it is $199, so it's a bit more mm -hmm. on the expensive side. Um, uh, currently, they add breakfast. I don't know if, I don't remember if we well, got breakfast. We did but not. Yeah, when I looked I it up, think. so I don't know if that's a new thing or if it was, I misread it, so don't quote me on that. Um, but I will say that, um, yeah, we, it was definitely plenty of time to do it. Mm -hmm. um, when you're doing it, just be aware of your bathing suit. So uh, <laughs> the waves are big, and uh, they definitely, you'll get like, knocked over and the board will hit you but also you don't want to lose like your britches or your top so if you're a girl i would very strongly if you wear a bikini i would wear like a shirt over it um so there was uh, one person in our group that was uh got a shirt very quick after their first run but yeah so i would just say it's a really fun experience if you ever wanted to learn to surf and we're not mm -hmm. huge ocean fans like where i'd ever go out i don't think where there are waves so this for me was like the perfect case where I could be like, I've tried surfing before. Yep. No, it was not in an ocean, but I have done it. Um, and so that is like a really perfect experience for me in that that was available at Disney World. Like who would have known I could learn to surf at Disney World? Yeah. And I mean, I would say that even if you have surfed before and you're okay, I mean, I probably wouldn't do this if I was an expert surfer, mm -hmm. but if you've stood up before and you're like, well, I don't want to go, it's not gonna be worth my time. I mean, the waves are big. big. The wave pool is surprisingly large when nobody else is in it but you. So like, even if you know how to surf a little bit, I still think you'd have a great time. And if you've never surfed before, like either of us, then it's a perfect experience for you because they're there to teach you how to do everything. Mm -hmm. And I do think they crank the waves up. So oh, I think way they uh, basically put them, I don't know if it's max, but they yeah. are li like real waves. Well, 
real real wave pool real waves. Real size <laughs> waves. <laughs> so, um, so it's not just like if you just look at it kind of rippling when you're uh -huh. at the out Typhoon Lagoon. It's not that. They're actual, they crank it up. Um, and I think there's only like two or three of you in the pool at a time. So yeah. that's a really good one. Uh, what other honorable mention tours do you have? Um, do you, can you think of any? I really think that Behind the Seeds is kind of a sleeper tour. I mean, I don't think anyone really thinks like, oh, I'm really excited to go see how plants are grown, <laughs> but it's fun. It's really inexpensive. It's about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, and you get to see some pretty neat stuff where they grow the plants, um, the, the food that they eat at a lot of these restaurants. Mm -hmm. You get to see some of those cool plants that are hanging you've ever ridden living with the land you know where they're hanging and they have these weird watering systems so you get to kind of see and hear the details of all of that at the end you get to eat a cucumber that <laughs> they grew there so i mean i think it's a really fun one especially if you don't have a ton of time or if you're trying to decide you know do i really want to spend you know a couple hundred dollars on a tour well this one i think is what 30 ish dollars mm -hmm. it's very inexpensive and every time we've ever done it I think we've just walked up and booked, right? Yes, yeah, we've never pre-booked that one. Right. I would, I would say that one's not Disney info, though. That's more like gardening. Right, Like yeah. So just be aware of that. But I still think it is very fun, even if you're not like super mm -hmm. into gardening. Um, it's still cool to hear how they do everything in the land yeah. pavilion. Um, I'd say like the other two honorable mentions that come to mind for me of ones that we've done are both also in Epcot. So there's a Future World Tour, um, and there is a... a a nation. So you have Destinations, which is the World Showcase yep. one, and you have Undiscovered Future World. Yep. So Destinations is going to be similar to kind of the Magic Kingdom tour we talked about, where you're going to have um, be walked around World Showcase and given a bunch of info mm -hmm. about each of the um, World Showcase pavilions. Uh, you have lunch at Rose and Crown. I believe at yep. the end they took us on Soren. Is that right? I think because it, yes. it was like the whole world. I think they and, did. I think so. Um, so you do get a ride aspect, but that one is good if you want to learn more about World Showcase and the cultures in World Showcase. Yep. The Future World Tour, I would only recommend if you are a super, super, super Disney fan and you want to see behind the scenes, uh, behind the scenes stuff. So I wouldn't say it's great mm -hmm. if you love Walt or anything like that. It's literally you're going to just see as many as are currently open, um, behind the scenes ones. So they take you to uh, lounges, basically. Right, so each pavilion, mm -hmm. or almost all the pavilions have a lounge, um, and they kind of just take you around to them. We, you go to the Mission Space Lounge, which I think was HP. They take you to the, what is it, Chevrolet Lounge. Mm -hmm. They take mm -hmm. you, I don't know who sponsors, even if it is sponsored anymore, in the Mission Space, or Spaceship Earth Lounge. Um, yeah, they take us to the Living Seas, which is a underwater lounge, which is pretty cool. But that's really what that tour is, which I didn't know at the time. So mm -hmm. I thought it's a little bit weird that the whole tour is going to see lounges. But looking back on it, you know, it's kind of cool because you don't even know where most of these are. They're kind of hidden. They have a cool little, you know, behind the scenes aspect to them that a lot of people don't even know exists. So mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that. But the destinations one I think is much better. Mm -hmm. That one of the two I thought was awesome, mostly because you are in the World Showcase well before it's open. We don't know, it usually opens at 11 o'clock, so you have a long time back there. And you just get to see things that you never would have seen because there's usually thousands and thousands of people wandering around. And you get to go and see all the details of all the different pavilions that you might not have otherwise known. So that one was mm -hmm. filled with information and a lot of fun. Yeah. Both of them, you get pins. I would say for me, the Future World one, seeing the um, the Seas Lounge, so I think it's technically used as like weddings and that mm -hmm. type of stuff. It can be, but when you walk in, you can they have huge windows where you can just look into the aquarium from a different angle. So that was pretty cool to see because I had no idea what's there. We've been yeah. we were scuba diving in the thing, and I didn't know it was yeah, there. Yeah, you wouldn't know. So um, so that was really cool. And then the other lounge that stood out was the one where you're in the spaceship Earth, and you can like look out and see everyone. Mm -hmm. And I would have if you showed me a picture, I would not know like where that picture was taken, but it's from the lounge. Yep. Um. So that one was cool, but again, probably wouldn't recommend that for most people. I would say, I would do the uh, World Showcase, like you said, do the World Showcase yes. one first. Um, and then if you're wanting to explore into more, um, then it's a good option. Yeah, but absolutely. I think on the Future World one, you did Test Track. Did we do Test Track? Was it Test Track or was it... Mitch and we did, uh, and we did, no, no we did, um, the ball. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh, Spaceship Earth. Yes. Yeah, we just, I think <laughs> I like, that's right. We did, we did Spaceship Earth on um, that one. And right. they walked you through the exit. So that's that right. Was kinda, you got on yeah. the exit. That's exactly right. Um, yep. but yeah, so you still get some of that ride component, but 
I would say uh, the pricing of those I think is all under $100. Um, so just the one you get lunch, the other one you don't. But those are worth looking into, especially mm -hmm. the World Showcase one, if you want to learn more about uh, the different pavilions and kind of the reasoning behind them. That one I would absolutely not just recommend, but probably only do if it was early in the morning mm -hmm. because I would not want to do that when the World Showcase is open. Yeah. To me, that tour is fun because you're in the World Showcase empty. Mm -hmm. Whereas <laughs> if it was filled with people, I don't think I would have enjoyed it really. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, one last thing about, I guess, do you have any more about these honorable mentions? No. So one last thing about tours in general, uh, we talked about how the surfing one was a little bit of a physical <laughs> exertion. Uh, so just be aware that many of these tours are walking tours. Mm -hmm. So just uh, be aware that you'll be on your feet. Uh, if you need any type of accommodations, just check with Disney beforehand to see if that's possible or not. Um, because it mm -hmm. is a fair amount of standing and walking for many of them. So just be, again, be aware of that aspect. Yep. Uh, but honestly, especially if you're a Disney fan, I'd say the tours are some of my favorite time in Disney. And oh, we know yeah. if we go with family and stuff, we're like, what tour do you want to do? What one are we doing, guys? <laughs> it's always the first question we ask. It's not where do you want to eat, what ride do you want to do? It's, <laughs> well, what tour do you want to do this time? Because, yeah. you know, we look forward to them every trip. Yeah. And I will say, take advantage of it when you're in Disney World because it, this isn't a thing that's common at the other Disney parks around the world. So most Disney parks around the world have maybe one or two other tours that are not available. They're not always in English. Yeah. So like for example, Paris, mm -hmm. we've done a tour there. As, I guess it's kind of like the Marceline one or something where they'd walk you down the main street and give you all the history. But it was only offered a couple days a week in English. All the other mm -hmm. days were in French and it's just, it wasn't popular. We were the only two mm -hmm. on it and that seemed to be the norm. So I don't even know if it's still ongoing. I mean, I eventually they imagine they will cancel it. People just don't like them. Um, yeah. Disneyland, which you think probably would have a lot of tours. I mean, they have a few, but mm -hmm. it is many. very limited. And I have to say, it didn't live up to the tours in Disney World. So definitely take advantage of Disney World tours because it is not like that anywhere else. Yeah. And one last thing. Um, so I would strongly recommend doing the tours. Many of them you book beforehand. So mm -hmm. search for the tours ahead of time. The tours do book up. So even though we've been lucky and we've had treks that aren't very busy or um, other ones that aren't very busy, some of them, if it, your timing is where it's busy, um, you don't want to miss out. So we have had cases where we've been like, oh, let's do this tour. And it's like booked. Well, so, especially the Magic Kingdom mm -hmm. ones, right? Yes. We've always had full groups in Magic Kingdom. I've never gone on small Magic Kingdom tour. Yeah. It's always mm -hmm. the you know more obscure ones. Mm -hmm. And especially if you want that early morning time slot. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of the times going to be the kicker. Um, so definitely, I recommend uh, if you search for any of these tours on the Disney World website, they'll pop up. You mm -hmm. can always call Disney um, if you're not sure and speak with a cast member, but mm -hmm. I strongly recommend booking them ahead of time. Unlike Disneyland, uh, most of the Disney World tours are refundable up to a certain point. Yep. So uh, you can, if you have to cancel, I, I think like you probably can't day of or maybe week of, but I think up until a certain point, they'll let you cancel. Yep. Just double check that before <laughs> beforehand. Um, but, but I would strongly recommend uh, planning them into your trip. Like Jeff mm -hmm. said, we do these before we even plan our dining <laughs> reservations many times. Um, so definitely like uh, consider those. Sometimes you can walk up and do them the day of, um, especially ones like behind the scene. Yeah. But a lot of these other ones, I would definitely call ahead. Yeah, so that's kind of why we love tours. It's a little bit of what makes them special to us, kind of some of our favorites, why you should do certain ones and why certain ones stand out to us. Um, I guess that's just kind of our overview of what makes tours in Disney World so special. Yeah, no, I I think that they're one of my favorite parts of how we eat Disney and how we go to the parks. And so yeah. I strongly recommend them. Hopefully you all found this helpful. Um, again, we're still kind of coming up with ideas for this series. So if you have any other suggestions, please leave us a comment below. Yeah. And we're having fun doing this. So we'll keep going at it. <laughs> yeah, we look forward to seeing you in episode three. Thanks, Thanks guys. <laughs> Bye.